Hey everybody, hey. welcome. Thank That's you for cool. joining us. Yeah. Now my name is Renata Cherry and I am your host today for Mark Caneso. <laughs> That's close enough. <laughs> Did I mess it up again? I've been trying to say his name for like the last five minutes and I promised I'd get you it right it? and I just did it wrong, didn't I? Yeah, that's okay. Aww. Everybody does, it's fine. Well, Mark, I'm used to it, no <laughs> tears. <laughs> we are so stoked to have you today. Thank you so much for yeah. coming Thanks to Adobe. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be doing for our fine audience? I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, I, I brought in some like started sketches um, I just chose a little phrase. I chose the comfort zone. Mm. Uh, so I'll be lettering, illustrating that. Um, mostly because this is very much out of my comfort zone. Mm. I don't normally draw in front of people. Mm. I don't like people watching me while I work. I like to have something ready to show them. So, uh, Well, don't yeah, worry be... about it. By the time that you're done, because we're gonna be here for the next three days, at the same time, you can come and see Mark. Three days? And see what he's working on. Well, yeah, man, three days. He <laughs> signed up for this, <laughs> I didn't did. you? Okay, so, uh, just so you guys know, we'll be back for the next three days at the same time, and you'll be able to hang out with me and Mark and see how the comfort zone is coming along. But I think by the time that we're done, you're gonna be well in the comfort zone. That's the plan. Yeah. So hi chat, how are you doing today? Hello people on the chat. Yeah, where are y'all from? Tell us where you're from and we'll get Mark started in drawing something. Yeah. Oh. Is it, can you show, I have some stuff drawn. Yeah, you have here. some stuff drawn? I started a few sketches just so that I had some things to go off of. Yeah. Um, this was my very, this one's very light. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, just kind of like playing with the shapes. I was wanting to do something that felt super comfortable in terms of like big bold letters that's kind of uh, it's kind of my go-to but I kind of keep trying to push it beyond what what's uh, what's legible what people expect and for letter forms um, so for the yeah, so for this one I just did a, like a very rough rough sketch here and mm -hmm. then um, I used some tracing paper to kind of refine that form a little bit nice. so you can see I, I get that initial shape down. Um, each time just looking at it in terms of like, oh, what, what am I liking about it? What's working? What do I want to change? Um, this I could, I should be, I could fill this in so you can kind of see the weight that this has. Oh, yeah. um, and the, good, the fun thing about drawing letter forms like this is you really get to focus on not only the, the black forms, but the, mm -hmm. the counter spaces because those, in, they become very necessary to make the letters legible. Right. Um, but you're playing with this idea of legibility, like how far can you go to like make it still a letter, right? Yeah, a letter that, yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. Um, it's it's kind of along the lines of like, yeah, where where can I go with this where it's a little bit ambiguous possibly, or people have to look at it a little bit longer yeah. as opposed to just reading it. They have yeah. to kind of like, stare at it maybe, feel it, feel it out a little bit. They have to um, think about it. Think that, about it. That reminds me of like graffiti, right? Because graffiti has sort of this mystical look to it. Like you see like a cool train yard or you see some graffiti that's all over and it's like, I can't exactly read it. And that's part of the, that's part of the beauty of graffiti. Yeah, it's being sure. able to like knowing the secret, right? Yeah, it's super cool. Uh, we got a lot of people from all over the world. I just want to let you know, not to make you more nervous or make yeah. you less in your comfort zone, but you are with friends from all over the world. We yeah, got Costa see, Rica. I see Nicholas asking about the ambigrams. Uh, what? Uh, maybe we'll show some of that. I have an Adobe ambigram that I could I could possibly share some stuff. But are you known for the ambigrams? Is that your, like your thing? It's a thing I like to play with. It's just another way to kind of uh, look at forms in another in a different way. Um, yeah. yeah. Oftentimes when you or drawing something you you know what you think it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So if you if you flip it around or you turn it backwards, you, you kind of start to look at the shape. Um, not necessarily like, oh, this is an O or this is an M, but if you look at the weights and, and the distribution of that kind of stuff. So I do tend to flip letters around and upside down and sometimes you see other letters because a lot of letters have a lot of symmetry to them or you know you flip an N, it looks like a U. So how can you, how can you use that to play around um, but that's not involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's some way to like use the counter space to say, have another phrase included in there. So yes, anagrams, but maybe not today because we are working on the comfort zone right now. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the second, yeah. So when I did the second drawing, I uh, was kind of just trying to shape it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got into my third one here, you see, I started to play around with a little bit more of the the proportions 
of these forms so on this this version everything was feeling a bit squished yeah um, I can see that so I would if I was doing this again I'm gonna do a, another version of this yeah um, but with this one I uh, I started kind of trying to even the weight out a little bit across the all the forms trying to fit some of these letters into like some of the other spaces that are here it's I like to I like when I'm playing with uh, or working with multiple words it's it's good to uh, I like to see how I can like, you know, dip these letters down and, and even make them touch. And, yeah. And uh, just really, really try to make this this mass become yeah. something more. Well, mass is really important in drawing because you know you can communicate all sorts of things. You can communicate, you know, the intention of a creature or of a character or of a word with mass. You know, you can sort yeah. of the velocity. You know, how skinny or how fat it may be. That gives sort of a characteristic to what you're drawing, and I can see where the comfort zone needs to be plush and comfy. It needs to be plush, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's really working out. Once this is shaped up, maybe we can have somebody sew it into like a big <gasps> sofa. What? That would be sweet. Actually, I think there was a blog post about like turning your digital stuff into quilts. I think it was a capture oh. blog post. Yeah, so maybe I'm gonna have to dial that up and we'll have to see what we can do about the comfort zone. There's a lot of people in the chat from all over and it's super cool to see them. And I also see some names that I recognize, so I'm just gonna do a little shout out if you don't mind while you sort of noodle on your beautiful drawing. I might get uh, another piece of paper. And yeah, please. Next layer. Please, you get set up the way you want to because we want you to be in your comfort zone. So I'm seeing Rob Zilla in the chat, of course. So nice to see your name up there. <laughs> And also Voodoo hey, Bao, she's in the house. And I also saw Shauna Parmigiana. I see you there. How are you doing, Shauna? I hope you're doing good. You know, Shauna's got an adorable dog. <laughs> I love dogs. And she, she's got this cute little puppy. I mean, I guess he's probably grown up, but I call all dogs puppies. <laughs> <laughs> What's this dog's name? Teddy. Teddy. Teddy? Mm-hmm. Teddy is very Shout cute. Shout out to Teddy. Shout out to Teddy, your cute dog. Uh, so before I go and do my next layer, I, I'll you know kind of look at what I have and look for my, the problem areas that I see or things that I need to like kind of work on or possibly uh, iterate on. And tell me uh, how you know those things. Do you just like feel them in your gut, or like like for this one, what's the first thing that pops out at you that you're like, oh, I gotta change that? Uh, mostly this way, this R T is working. Um, I like that I can bring this big. To kind of create this shape here, I can bring this leg of the R really far down. But I'm trying to figure out how I make this this line. Does it connect to the O? But then I wanted it to connect. I wanted to fill in the space below it. Yeah. So um, I don't care for the way this Z is working currently. It kind of feels mm. a little off. It could also look like an L. So I probably need to mm. yeah, work on how that. Yeah. And this is the comfort loan. The <laughs> <laughs> um, but I and that that's, that would be like a difficult thing to figure out because I, I want the bottom part of the Z to kind of fill in this this space here. Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to create these this kind of shape here like this. So yeah, it's like motion. It's like the yeah. illusion of motion through that mass that yeah. we were talking about before. So, uh, and then you know does is the C this, I want the C to kind of occupy this whole space, but do, yeah. in doing so, does it become too bold? Is it um, too much C? Is it too much C? Is there ever too much C? I don't know. What do you think, chat? Is there too much C? What can we do? <laughs> uh, yeah, and so, but if it is going to be a, a larger mass over here, maybe this area down here just needs to gain some weight so that it kind of balances it out. And if I fill this in, you might also see. Yeah, that might help it us. It helps. It does help. And I, this is normally how I work. Like I'm a mess. So I just have stuff <laughs> everywhere. You're in good company because uh, I'm also a mess, just so you know. Like my whole house is just a mess. My desk is a mess. And normally I would probably put this one aside and like try a different version, just like post it. I, I tend to just tape things up on my wall. Yeah. And let them stare at me until they're ready to, like till they start talking to me and calling to me to like, hey, fix me. Or I'm the version you should be presenting. Your drawings do that too? They do. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not alone, guys. 
<laughs> but this one currently is the one that is calling at me, so. Okay, cool. Um, I think it's a really good choice, so you go ahead and work a little bit. It's, it's really gorgeous, honestly. I draw, I love to draw. I'm actually the marketing manager here for drawing and painting at Adobe, and uh, this is my first time hosting Adobe Live. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far because this is, you know, a newbie here. Um, but it's not my first time being in front of a camera, which is why I'm totally fine making a dork out of myself in front of hundreds of people. It is my first time, but I have, I'm gonna make a dork out of myself regardless. I no <laughs> you choice. are not. No you, are, you are totally awesome. <laughs> You're showing them what for. Yeah, it's super great. But uh, you know, when I look at the different volumes and shapes you have created, I also think about value as well. Like, because you can change like the weight of something, even if it's a big fat C, you could change it, you know, with your values that you might choose later. Unless you usually work in like one or two colors. Yeah, this will become, once this becomes vectorized, which I'll possibly do tomorrow, um, it's gonna become a whole nother monster because it's gonna fill in and it's gonna blob out and I'm gonna have to then make more adjustments and figure out how to fix that. Um, I love blob out. That's a great like, like I just want to blob out on Friday nights. Um, I, yeah, the, the vector, vectorizing of this will, uh, it's going to change it completely um, in terms of how heavy it's going to look. Because right now, even as dark as I could color it, it's still not going to be that like solid black that it's going to be once it no. is, has the vector form. Magical vectors. Um, so yeah, I draw and paint. I love drawing. I've always drawn ever since I could ever remember. But I, you know, as opposed to like writing some angsty Nine Inch Nails lyrics in my journal as like a, you know, teenager, I've never really done hand lettering in like a, a real space attempt. Right I know, right? I'll just say host and oh my, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. I need to make sure that. Yes, the, you can. We can do. I need to look want. for directions from the director. This, make I'm sure. Pretty it's sure fine. this is. Our hour and a half. Oh my gosh, we're taking it over. This is mutiny. <laughs> so um, I see in the chat people are saying we're doing great. So I just wanted to pass oh, that info along that even though we're both newbies, we're being well received. Thank you, chat. So sweet. And thank you for the compliments on my hair. I definitely styled it extra today. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. There were none about mine. I think Ryan got oh, some about his. Your hair is pretty sweet. I like the. <laughs> <laughs> Please pardon me while I drink a gallon of fizzy water. I can't drink too much water or I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom in the middle of this. So. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so cool. Yes. Oh, <laughs> it is cool. I, it's funny because I do the same thing. I have to run out to the bathroom. So I'm, I love that we're like finding Maybe the similar we, things. We can find like, a bathroom break. Time. Yeah, I know, right? We'll be like, well, I'll be back. The newbies need a bathroom break. I did good on the flight over. I only went to the bathroom twice. <laughs> Normally it's around the five to seven times. I don't know if it's the altitude Aww. or what it is, but it is. Oh, like, what a nightmare. And the, the people next to me, totally asleep. So I had to like make lots of like kind of noises to see if I could just, they could wake up naturally. I hate that because I, yeah. I'm Kind of stretch a... and bump into them. She was just out. Her head was, you know, doing this. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I gotta hold it for a oh, bit. Oh, you poor thing. I do the same because I drink so much fizzy water. I'm so super into it, like just drinking a ton of water. It's basically my only beverage. <laughs> so I get into trouble like that as well, where I'm like, oh, that's great. I just drank a gallon and now I have to be on Adobe Live. So yeah, but we'll be we'll be good. We can hang in there. Okay. Fizzy water is life, Shauna. It totally is. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a question here from Dustin. He Hello, wants Dustin. to know what we both studied in college. So I think that's a really good question. Actually, so why don't you start? I went to Otis College of Art and Design and studied graphic design communication arts. So that is what my degree is in, um, <clears throat> and how I got into type design. Um, being a graphic designer, I knew I was going to be using type all the time, and uh, it was just another way for me to control the the project, the process, all that stuff. Like if I can create these forms that I'm going to be using, why not? Um, I had a inst couple instructors who were also type designers, so that helped and uh, kind of showed me that, like, you know, an individual can create a typeface. So it was, uh, it was pretty rad. That is super rad because, I mean, how many times do you find, like, a typeface and you're like, oh, I just wish it was a slightly different? And then you just change it and just make it what you want it to be. 
You don't want to change their design. You want to make your, a new one. Okay, well, if you're <laughs> awesome like Mark, you want to make your own. If you're lazy like Renee, you take a font and you just push some, you expand that outline and you push some, some dots yeah. around. Around those corners, you got yourself a logo. Yeah, and I made it. <laughs> what did you study in? Oh yeah. College. That question was out there for you. Yeah, it was. Oh. So I went to school for animation and visual effects, actually. Um, and then I skipped that completely and I went to the corporate world. <laughs> so I spent some time um, at a couple other software companies and now I'm here at Adobe. And if you're wondering what it's like to work for Adobe, it really is a dream job. Like if you told 19 year old angsty Nine Inch Nails writing in her journal Renee that she'd be working for Adobe when she was in, you know, in her late 30s. Uh, she wouldn't <laughs> believe you at all. It's just really cool to be here. It's such an awesome place to work with so many creative people and so much passion for artists like you. I kind of work for Adobe too. Yeah? Well, with Adobe. I am. Well, you are right now. Well, right now, <laughs> but also um, a Typekit Foundry partner. Yeah, so that, oh I have yeah. All of, my, all of my typefaces are available if you use Typekit or the Creative Cloud, you have yeah. access to all those. And speaking of Creative Cloud, I'd well, like to bring up... Transition? I know, transition. <laughs> I'd like to bring up the fact that um, before I worked at Adobe, I was a dirty serial user who was holding onto my 5.5 serial for dear life. <laughs> and now that I work for Adobe, clearly they've granted me Creative Cloud because, you know, I'm an employee. And there's a lot of advantages, and one of them is Typekit. And I didn't even know what it was because I was a 5.5 serial holder who didn't want to find out anything. So to all those other Renees out there watching who are like, no, my serial number, can you tell them why Typekit is cool and what it actually is? Because I think people don't know. Yeah, well, I went to, um, I was part of the Type Village last year at Adobe Max, and it was pretty crazy. Like there's so many people that go to Max and I was with the, the type kit village. <clears throat> and the everybody, not everybody, but a lot of the people who came up, they did they didn't have an idea what, what type kit is. And um, basically it it's a collection of, of various foundries and, and typefaces that can be used uh, with web on web and you can also sync them straight to your computer to use in all of your designs. So Big word, foundry. What's a what's a font foundry? Uh, it, someone who produces typefaces. There you go. Yeah. No, it's not a quiz. It's just oh. I want to make sure that everybody out there knows that that that's a thing. Like a font foundry is somebody. Yeah. There's there's houses basically. And these houses create fonts, as yes. I understand, right? Yes, but I am also an individual, and so it can be as little as one person, or you could have the the giants that have multiple people working on various designs. <clears throat> Now remember to be in your comfort zone. I am asking you questions and distracting you from drawing. So if that is too much, you can be like, hey Renee, why don't you talk to the chat a little bit? And in the chat, I see my buddy John. Hey John, it's nice to see you joining. Where's John? <laughs> oh, he was up, oh. he scrolled up a little bit, sorry. I just saw his little icon, I, I recognized it. Yeah, Typekit is the bomb, Robzilla, absolutely. Now I want to remind everybody that we've got a challenge. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the oh. challenge today. So using any of our Adobe apps that you might want to use, including Photoshop or Illustrator or Adobe Sketch and Draw, which are on mobile, we'd like you to hand letter the word Adobe Live. And there's actually a palette, color palette for you to use. And so if you're in the chat, if you go over, there's a little tab that says challenge and that's where you're going to find it. So. If you want us to check out your cool illustration of Adobe Live, you gotta make it. You gotta submit it. So you're out there, do it. Like make us some cool stuff so that me and Mark can take a look. I had did that. <gasps> what? You already did one? Uh, this was just the other day I was messing around. I didn't realize it was gonna be the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Ah, that's so funny. That's great though. It looks great, honestly. So he's already done. I'm done. So I don't have the color palette him. though. Can somebody tell me what that is? Oh I yeah. Seen that. So it's from the very first streamer. I believe her name was Anna. I think that's right. And if it's wrong, I apologize deeply. Uh, but she did this beautiful illustration, and we used Adobe Capture to pull out a couple of colors from it. Nice. And that's what the color palette is. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. So mm -hmm. this was my. I kind of basically just redrew that area. But this was like 
kind of the problem area I was trying to figure out. So you like isolated does, the problem area. Yeah. How does this R interact? I like that it dropped below here, so I don't think I'm going to connect it. Um, but then the spacing, this is very, very awkward to mm, me. It's a little It's still squished in there, so I will probably open that up. And if I'd have to think about it, I, do you think the relationship between the skinny bit of the R and the fatty bit of the R is maybe part of the tension? Here? Yeah. Uh, this leg is normally a little bit thinner. Okay. Um, as it, as it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's an upstroke into it, if it's a script like this. But I mean, I'm just refer. It's just a reference. It doesn't have to be exact with this kind of lettering. But totally. Um, I, so I would probably keep that a little bit thinner. I might bolt, I might add some weight down in the bottom part. But okay. this, uh, I'm looking at this counter space here. Yeah. I'm erase a little bit. Um, I'll probably widen this, but not too much because if you're looking at. These are all pretty tight. So right, so you're kind I, of creating I, it, repetition visually. Yeah, and I just want to make sure. Let's see if I just. Yeah. The yeah. good thing about this is you can kind of space as you go with the with the letter, but with the letter with the tracing paper. Oh, you're right, because you can kind of move it around yeah. and like get it a little bit different. Yeah, and you can pick the things that you like out of the forms and change the ones you don't. We've got some questions, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. Um, so there's two questions. Okay. We've got one from. I'm sorry. I'm gonna I'm gonna screw up your name. I think Ashta is my best uh, representation. I apologize. Um, how do you decide the layout and that you're gonna decide for your hand lettered art? Like when you decided these three lines, you know, like what drew you to that? At first, I started with just the single word comfort, actually, um, mm. and then I was like, well, what else can I do? So I hear I have a few different versions that I may play with at other times, but. Um, oh, I see that. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So you just like try different stuff. Yeah, you, you don't just, really. You could just, well, for this one specifically, like, is I knew, okay, here's comfort. And mm -hmm. uh, looking at how how the the C, this has, a, O and M had no had no A senders, but then the F coming up, it's like, it's a nice little space for a smaller word, the, to fit into. Yeah. Um, and between the C and the, the way the F descender came, I thought, oh, I can probably fit that Z, a cap Z in there really nicely too. Um, so for this one, it's pretty easy, the three letters to stack them in a, you know, one on top of the other. Um, and then I, like how, what can I exaggerate? What can I, you know, they're sort of swashy, but they're kind of just these big like, swashy <laughs> waves of form to kind of create the, this shape. Now that was one option because that was kind of a nice little uh, Composition. unit, yeah. yeah. Um, and then with, you know, if you go with, look at something like this one, I uh, just nest, nestled the and zone underneath where this the comfort kind of s took the took on this yeah. bean shape. And I find that really attractive. But if I'm going to art direct this, and here I go, uh, what I love about this is that it's a circle, so it feels like a zone, like. If that's yeah. where I want to go, like. Right. Do you want to stay in it or out of it? Whereas that's kind of like, ooh, I feel wavy. I don't know that I'm comfortable anymore. <laughs> I might throw up. I did this one this morning <laughs> just to have another option. Oh, that's cool um, too. Which I, I might play around with a little bit more because it has, it could still have this nice shape, but then these forms are just way more kind of funky and organic. Yeah. Um, it's just, just as a way to, you know, try a, a, a different variation. Same idea in terms of having this kind of big weight to it, but they're more free to kind of bend and twist as they as they need to. So there's a little bit more interaction yeah. and like one relies on the other kind of like to take its shape. Mm -hmm. So And it it feels kind of sixties <laughs> to me. It has like a sixties vibe to me, like uh I don't know, like dazed and confused style. Do you think that's accurate or do you, like, can you I, tell why I'm, I'm reading it? You're not trying I'm for not it. thinking about that when I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just maybe some of the lettering at that time period that was like this or totally. psychedelic kind of, but let's make it, let's make it new. Yeah, it's super cool. We had one more question um, and it was to, it was from Noto-san. Who are your top three typology heroes? Heroes. I don't have any because, like I said, all the type I do is like angsty Nine Inch Nails lyrics 20 years ago, so I don't got nothing. Sorry, I can't help you. I have like not even favorite fonts other than I'm not a Serif fan, but I'll let you take this question. 
this is it's difficult to point out specific people. Um, currently working, I like to, I'm a huge fan of the guys at Underwear. It's a Dutch type foundry. They do amazing stuff. Um, and that, that's a group of, of three, I think three guys. I don't, I can't say their names specifically, but. Uh, They're Dutch, so yeah, yeah uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Ken Barber is amazing in terms of all things lettering, type design, like the guy can do it all. He's a wealth of knowledge and mm. skill. And uh, so he's definitely up there. Um, who was the third one? You can think about it, take your time. It. Take your time. I'll so try I don't not know, to, try not to what? Try not to lean over my work here. Oh, uh, you're okay, don't worry. We want you comfortable. I'm, <laughs> the, I'm the one who gets to like wrangle the chat. So don't worry, you be in your comfort zone and draw and you're totally doing great, honestly. So we've got a chat and win coming up in just about two minutes. If you guys haven't been through that before, it's pretty easy. All you gotta do is chat and then you win, but only when we tell you, okay? So don't get too excited yet. It's not happening yet. You'll know there'll be fireworks and craziness, <laughs> but like, get ready, okay? We got two what minutes. What are they gonna win? All right, I can't tell you yet. They can't tell us yet. Well, we can tell them, but we can tell them in two minutes because okay. then we can have a little bit of suspense. But I think you know what they're going to win because you're the provider of said gift. Oh, oh, it's that gift. Yes, absolutely. Oh, you're definitely going to want to get on in on this. Yeah, you're going to want to get in on this. Hi to everybody who's just joining us. Thank you so much. You joined us just in time for chat and win in two, almost a minute and a half. Ooh, so stay countdown. around. Jeff says every time they play the animation, his cat attacks his display. Like, <laughs> it's really cute. Are they constantly playing the animation? No, it's just um, when the chat and win comes up, oh, he says. Because oh. it, it's like a, it's cute. You'll, I don't want to ruin it for anybody who's not seen it. But Jeff, I'm going to need a video of that, please. You're going to need to video that and post it on like Twitter so that I can see that. Okay, so we got a couple questions about the materials you use. You okay. only have about a minute, so you don't have to go too deep into this. But we've got questions about your pencil weight and also just anything else about what you're physically using, like oh, paper. This, yeah, this is just, I draw on regular old plank white paper and then I'm using um, tracing paper. And I do have some marker paper that I brought um, in case I wanted a cleaner version. This has, this has like a filminess to it. Yeah. Um, and you're using a, a, what's the thickness of the letter? Do you even know? Do you even like Yeah, well, attention? if a pencil says 3H, but I don't think that's what I put inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> this one is an H. I have, I have some that are um, B, 2B. 2B. Um, but yeah, it's pretty smeary. But again, I, I work pretty messy. So that kind of. Work messy. I'm into that. Kind of mm -hmm. helps. If I don't have paint all over my face by the time I'm done painting, it wasn't successful. Yeah. Then how do you know you were working? Yeah, how do you even know I painted something if it's not in my hair and in my teeth and, and you're not all putting over the it floor? On the walls when you mm. and not everything else you touch. Yeah, but yeah, because of course I don't wash my hands after I'm done. I'm just like touching drawers and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, because well, I'm a mess. Gross. I know, it's a problem. <laughs> so that feels a little bit better. <gasps> That's it. Do you guys see the fireworks? All oh. right. So we're gonna show you. Cute little video that Jeff Trojek's cat's gonna freak out on. <laughs> and then we're gonna be back and it's gonna be chat and win. So please log in and get ready. Okay, friends, we are we back. back. It's chat and win. And you can say anything you want, but how about What's your favorite font? And name it by name, okay? I wanna see like Gothic Sans, ITC, and all that stuff in there, all right? All the little weird font bits. Tell me your favorite font. And that's how you're gonna win. And then we will have a computer, like AI, like Skynet thing, we'll pick a winner out of the chat. <laughs> Comic Sans. <sighs> Source Sans Pro, that's a solid choice. I don't know why I have such an issue with serifs. Like I can't handle serifs if it's not the right, like if it's not a bank, I'm like, no, <laughs> serifs, no, go away. Oh, Brush Script Bold, Black Castle, oh, Futura, Bodoni, Lobster, I don't think, is Lobster a font? It is a font. 
I didn't know anything. Oh, here we go. Paul Alvarez, you're oh, the Paul. winner. And let's show them what we got. Does anybody have a copy or do you have it? Um, I put one somewhere, but I have Sorry that one. I don't I know it's... where it is. I should have been on, here. prepared. This is what Paul's winning? This is what Paul's winning. So Paul, you have won. Oh, <laughs> upside down. Twofold. Twofold. It's this gorgeous zine that Mark made, and it's got Actually, his it's... awesome hand lettering all throughout it. It's beautiful, really beautiful work. And we're gonna send that along to you. Thank you so much, Paul. Set that there for some, some nice decoration. <laughs> Congrats, you won. You wanna show them what's inside of it? Or I do, it, actually. Or what the other people, cause you can win another one of these tomorrow. Yes, stay tuned you and you can back. win one of these tomorrow. <laughs> How cool is that? It's so beautiful. I don't want to take it apart because I'm going to ruin it. Oh. Yeah. I can't be trusted. Remember, I'm a mess. You, can't, you cannot be trusted. <laughs> Paul won't like it if you destroy it. Paul won't like piece. it. I'm going to need to put this far away from my drink before it's just like psh. <laughs> well, yeah, I saw a lot of cool fonts in there, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is with me and serifs, but I get really judgy. That's all I know is that I see the serifs and I'm not into, <laughs> not into it. it. Not into it. All modern all the way for me. I can't explain it. I'm gonna look at the C. Let's see how it interacts. I like what you did to that R, and, and I can't even put my, I can't put my like finger on what exactly it is. It's just something about like the more room it has. Yeah, I'm wondering now if I, it's, it needs to kick down farther because it may have bumped my T up too high, but mm -hmm. um, that's all kind of part of the flow of it, so. Figure it out. That's true. Well, you've got three days to work on this if you'd like, or we can always switch to something new to excite our viewers. Oh, people are like, don't shoot the sheriff, the serifs. <laughs> Thankfully, Does have any cool font jokes? Yeah, that that is a good font joke. Thankfully, I, I'm not allowed to have guns, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mess. Remember, I can't have that. More font jokes would be good, though. I do have that Kanye West mug. I'm a Kanye West fan, I'm sorry. I apologize in advance. I agree with all of your critiques of him. All of your critiques are valid. But he has this beautiful tweet, um, which is just, I get emotional over fonts. And I love it so much. I got a little mug of just his tweet on it. Sometimes I get emotional. Ah, oh, here's a font joke for you from Nikita. Sketching Bill's character. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, wow. You get it? Yeah, I do. Character. Good job, Nikita. Doc wants to know if I hate all serifs. And I think someone else, I'm sorry, I missed it. Um, so don't, don't, like, I haven't seen the right serifs. That's all there is. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just, I feel like people use serifs irresponsibly because there's, they feel to me like established and official and sort of old school. And if you're not a library or a bank, I don't know why you're using it. That's I know, I'm super judgy. Yeah. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I'm judgy about fonts. You I'm a really kind serves. person otherwise, I swear. <laughs> but fonts, mm, mean. <laughs> I have, Jan says, I haven't met the right type. Keep them coming. <laughs> Kendall wants to know, what about the island of San Serif? Yes, I would live there. I would live on the island of San Serif with my Proxima Nova and be very happy. What the font is wrong with you? Well, many things. Where do I get started? Uh, Howard Pinsky has my back. He says, he's not a fan of serifs either. How would I know you and me are gonna get along just perfectly? <laughs> hmm. Gosh, that looks so cool. Honestly, like, it's such a small change, but I see it. Because I agonize personally over my sketches as an artist, because I do draw. Mostly I draw like dogs and cute girls and monsters, but I'm there's so much tension for me between the sketch and the final render. Because the sketch has life and beauty, and then the final render is like, oh, that's dead. You sure killed it. <laughs> you and know? that's you'll see it dead that when I vectorize this. Um, but that's the 
the that's a whole nother game. It's like, okay, how do you how do you bring that life into those those forms? Yeah. Or how do you capture what's what's in the sketch and make it right. part of the final thing? That's the most tension for me is looking at the sketch back and forth, honestly. <laughs> The deadline's in 24 minutes. They can't contain their excitement. There's a nice little joke there from Nikita again. Thank you for He's that. He's got a lot of them. He does have a lot of them. So yes, don't forget there's the challenge. So if you are hanging out in the chat, which I do hope you are, you've got 22 minutes left to hand letter the words Adobe Live using our suggested color palette from Anna and her beautiful work. So please do that, and in 22 minutes, we will be reviewing the work and checking it out. I'm assuming the people who are working on it have been working on it, they're not just starting. But if you do just start, I think there's gonna be another in the next session, right? Yes. So you can keep working on it. Yes. You don't have to get it done in 22 minutes. You don't have to get it done, but if you want us to but see it. if you it, want us to see it, you do. Which you do, don't you? I mean. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, Nikita has another one. Oh, goodness gracious. He sees we're not font of his type of humor. Mm. So Roxanne has a legitimate question, and she's asking about what you're doing with the tracing paper, since you're copying from the previous layer, but she wants to know how you're improving on it. And I think maybe Roxanne missed it. We talked a little bit about that in the beginning. Yeah, as, I, as I'm tracing, I'm mostly working on the shapes and the spacing of the letters. So you can kind of see in here, if I put them side by side, um, some of the proportions have changed here. And again, I, I know my drawings aren't perfect and they won't ever be, but for me, it's just about getting uh, enough of a reference so that I, when I bring it into the computer, I have uh, the basic thing to work from. Um, so for me, this, this will never be perfect and that's fine. Um, it's just got to get the feeling I want across and kind of tackle some of the issues that that I see. Yeah, and you could always change it later. That's the beauty of, That's right. of digital art is that you'll be able to rechange this composition. Now tell me, how are you going to get this into the computer? Would you use Adobe Capture? I would not <laughs> <laughs> use wah, wah. Adobe Capture. I could use Adobe Capture just to ha get something to trace, but yeah. I would probably just, I just take photos and mm. either email them to myself or upload them on my Creative Cloud and just plop them in that way. Um, but yeah, usually I trace from, from an image of the sketch. Totally. Um, if I wanted to use this quickly, I could use Capture uh, just to quickly vectorize it and kind of start putting it on stuff if I had anything to, if it was working on a specific project for this, like, mm -hmm. I know, oh, I want to put this on a wall, then I could just quickly snap it, make sure it's proportionally fitting the wall that I'm going to put it on or, or whatnot. If you haven't used Adobe Capture, it's pretty sweet. It's a free app. You don't even need to have, be paying for Creative Cloud to use it. And what it can do is vectorize stuff. And that's why I was asking, because you can sort of take a picture of something that you're working on, um, whether it be your artwork or somebody else's artwork, and then vectorize it. And, but I don't know what the complication is there. It might be trickier to break it up in Illustrator. And if I took it with Capture and used and brought a vector in, I would still use that as my base tracing layer. I wouldn't. And you just trace yeah, I wouldn't it. try to clean up those vectors. Um, that makes sense. Just so you have more control over the points that you're placing. Right, because it could be probably to too many. Too it can. Many it adds a few extra. Um, <laughs> one or two. One or two extra points, um, but it it is a. I, I do use it. I do have it on my phone. I see somebody asking a question about the most layers that you've ever had. Good Snake wants to know what's the most layers. Now, I don't know if Good that's snake? really even a thing in Illustrator. Um, I mean, is it so much like having a ton of layers? To me, that feels like a Photoshop problem, but also it, I'm not a type designer. Do you mean layers like tracing paper layers or layers like in the file? That's a great question. Uh, like I know. I would say normally I wouldn't even have done this layer. Like I would go and vectorize from this mm -hmm. just because I'm I'm confident that I could figure it out in in the computer. Um, but I'm doing this to try to try to get it a little bit cleaner or get some things a little bit more worked out. That makes sense. It gives you more time. Kind of it's quicker, yeah. weirdly enough, to work like that. So yeah, Good Snake is asking about paper, not Illustrator. Oh. I was off the mark. So. You've got what? Two layers? Just two layers. Uh, well, let's see. It started on it started on this paper. Two, three, four. Yeah, 
four or five. I, I wouldn't go more than that. If I'm having that many problems with it, I probably need to scratch it and start over. Mm. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. James Russell wants to know about capture, so I'm gonna tell him a little bit yeah. about that. I think so I need a new piece of lead. So yeah, change it. Uh, so James, capture does work on photos. So you could take a, old, a photo from that you've from the past and actually like vectorize something out of the photo, or you can use live capture with your camera and anything you point at it, it'll try to vectorize for you. It's up to you. It's kind of kind of open. Do you usually trace without a light box? Tim wants to know. I yeah, I've never had a used a light box before. Mm -hmm. It's kind of more. I mean, not that I've never used it. I don't own one or. Yeah, so. it's kind of hard to find because it's kind of an older animator thing. You know, that's not really quite so. And it's not easy to get one, at least. That's what I remember. And we got another question about what was your first paid gig, and that comes from Drake. My first paid gig? Yeah. Do you remember your first paid gig? Because I'm not sure that I can even. Well, I used to. <laughs> the way I taught myself Illustrator was. I used to um, I used to vectorize logos for a buddy's screen printing shop. Oh, You'd cool. have really bad artwork come in that somebody <laughs> might have sketched, or uh, and so yeah, I like well, I have this program called Illustrator. Let me see if I can help you out. And then he used to get you know twenty bucks for a for <laughs> for a vector so that he could screen print the the shirts for that you know that t-ball team or whatever uh, it was with their but then really we started mascot uh, or something we started making our own shirts and so and he would he would have artwork that he's like hey can you make this for the screen and so I would that's that's how I learned to place my points poorly at the time but that's Aww. that's what the first usage of Illustrator for me was that's super cool now I came from Photoshop I, I pirated Photoshop when I was 19 and what? <laughs> I know like we all did um, no <laughs> Don't lie. We know. We know when you're lying. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> so I started in Photoshop when it comes to digital art because it was the it's the standard, right? Even back in 2001 when I first started drawing, that's that's where I started in. So when I first opened Illustrator up, oh boy, howdy, <laughs> was I confused? What is this? There's yeah. two arrows. Layers don't really work the way I expect. What is even going on? So like. I can't imagine what it was like for you starting out in Illustrator. Did you start in Photoshop, or did you start in well, Illustrator? I had one at my, the community college I was at before I went to Otis. We, um, I had a course that taught us Photoshop, Illustrator, and um, PageMaker at the time, I believe. Um, so that was, my, that was the first introduction to it, but that was kind of where I realized, oh, I can, I can use this. I can use it. I preferred Illustrator from the get-go. Um, so I kind of jumped into that one. That's crazy, because I can't imagine what that life is like if you were the, because I had so much pain in Illustrator until I had a real course and understood what the two arrows were about. And then like I kind of calmed down a little bit. <laughs> and I, I was like, okay, I get it. Points and selection, direct selection. And yeah, no, I get it now, it's fine. Um, but personally, I don't really, you know, I, I don't really use Illustrator to make illustrations. I'm totally a painter. It's all about, you know, layers of brushwork and texture and stuff. Yeah, that's my fun. That's that's where I'm happy at. That's where you're happy at. That's yeah. Great. Everyone's got their happy place. Yeah, that's where I feel the most comfortable. Paul Alvarez thinks that your points are really masterfully placed, and he can't wait to see the digitizing. And I agree because I can see where like the right points are gonna make this just sweet. Yeah, the right points are gonna make these curves not look like crap like they do right now. <laughs> they don't look like crap, don't say that. You have to be kind to yourself. You have to always say nice things about yourself. Um, Anna wants to know if I've used a couple other painting programs, and I assure you, Anna, I have used every painting program there is, because it's part of my job. Um, you know, you just got to. You gotta see what's out there. You gotta see what other people are doing. So yeah, I've tried, I've tried just about everything, for sure. Abdul says he came from Microsoft Paint to Photoshop oh. to Illustrator, which is like, woo, that's like expanding your your world three times X, like from paint. <laughs> Crazy cool. Hmm. I learned about the pain of points when it came to Maya animation. Because uh, when you animate in Maya, everything has a motion curve. And they're, they're Bezier curves, mm -hmm. just like you would expect in Illustrator. And just like Illustrator, if you place your points incorrectly, you are fighting it. 
So you have to be careful about where you place them. Yeah, but the good thing about Illustrator and the point placement is that they're not set in stone. You can move them, change them, delete them, adjust them, which you'll see tomorrow or whenever we get to that part. Uh, mu you know, much like a sketch, like you could have, you're gonna have sketch versions in your Illustrator document as well, or first round, second round. Every every time you pass, it's a pass, it's a refinement. So. No, it's yeah. true. And we're finding that sketch each time. I'm just, I don't have a lot of patience for pushing little points around, so I can't imagine. <laughs> I'd get crazy, I think. We got a question about your pencil pushers uh, logo. They just want to know where the where the inspiration came from that. Pencil oh, pushers. I, this I'm making into a patch, possibly a patch or a button, so I knew I wanted this shape to be a circle. And pull it down a little bit. Oh. That's okay, there. you're doing fine. Uh, so yeah, it was like, okay, I'm gonna try splitting it in half and see if I can fill in that space again. I like it, it's super great. I've always wanted to make a patch of, of my work or like something and I've just not, i am not gotten to it. I've started doing so much drawing of stuff that I, I, like I have to get this off the computer, I have to get it off of just flat surfaces. So I did start making various pieces from other lettering projects. So I have pins or hats or shirts, anything that I've made a table out of. Oh, uh, what? I, yeah, I have an at table. That's it's crazy. Basically, the, at, the at symbol? Yeah, the at symbol. It goes like this. That's so cool. And I made it into a table, a small table. What? I love that. The CNC routered, yeah, just yeah, the yeah. one shape. It was flat and then I glue stacked 12, 12 of them up. Heck and so yeah. now it sits in my house. That's super cool. I actually sold a couple of them. What? I want an at table. That's amazing. So chat, if you could have a table made out of one character, any character, what would it be? I like the at symbol, that's pretty cool, but if you were gonna get Mark to make you a custom table, what would you choose? CNC routers are sweet. Not that this is a show about CNC routers, but now I like wanna talk about that. <laughs> yeah. I've done a few pieces out of routered wood and routered foam. Oh, uh, foam is so cool we when made, it's that routered, like it's all soft and crazy. We made uh, eight foot letters for my wife and I's wedding Aww. that we floated in a pool, which was awesome. That's cool as heck. I love making stuff physically and I've always wanted to like make big objects, just something large. It kind of doesn't even matter what. Laser cutting what's, is super sweet. What's stopping you? Mm, it's purely time. Oh. Purely time. We got some requests for tables coming in. So uh, we've got ampersand, seems very popular. The hashtag seems popular, which by the way, I think is called an octothorpe. An octothorpe, mm -hmm. you are correct. Yep, so I mean, hashtag is, is what we know it as, but I believe the original term is octothorpe, which just rolls off the tongue, right? And it's just, just an easy thing to say. I see in Terabang, is that how you say that? I've only read that word, I've never said it out loud. I would imagine that's how you say it. <laughs> uh, those are all super good. I got. I see a tilde, tilde is pretty good, and I see a star as well too. That's fun, super, super fun. Also referred to as the pound symbol. Thank you, Rachel, that is true. I can really see like the improvement from this trace. It's, that R, you totally nailed it. So now. He felt strangled in the other one and you, you yeah, freed him. He's a little bit squished in here. Yeah. He, he's like, there's a little bit more room for me. Come on, people. He's more comfortable. He's more comfortable in here. Yeah. But I do think he was, I think I need to drop it down. And then so the T can drop a little bit lower. Mm. Uh, which I will continue to do. But right now I'm gonna get the in there and then figure out if I can work on that Z a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> There's time for that. I think you'll have time for that. We got about 40 minutes and I'm sorry guys. Still 40 minutes? Yeah, I, w I think so, right? Um, I was supposed to tell you that two minutes ago, <laughs> sorry, that- uh, We're not on a schedule here. <laughs> You, I was trying to remind you guys at 10 minutes till, but now I'm reminding you at eight minutes till that if you'd like us to look at your challenge submission, you'll need to get it in. You only have eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. 
and then we'll take a look at some of the beautiful things you've created. I can't wait, honestly. I'm pretty excited to see it. They looked at quite a few in the last session. Yeah, they did. So I'm kind of stoked to see what we've got. Jan is leaving us, so I'm gonna say bye, Jan. Thank see you later, for joining Jan. us. Thanks for dropping by. And Voodoo Val has helpfully uh, re reminded me that you need to go to the challenge <laughs> submission tab. So uh, when you're in the chat, just at the top there, just click the challenge tab and you'll see all the information on how you submit and what we're looking for, which is the lettering phrase Adobe Live, hopefully in the color palette chosen by Anna. Is the color palette list like shown somewhere? Yeah, well? it's, like, yeah, it's shown there. It's really, it's a nice mix of like, you can kind of get a hint of it from some of these oh, preview gotcha. submissions. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just an, a nice spread of colors. It should be pretty cool. Drink break. I'm not trying to do ASMR here, so I'm gonna stay away from the microphone. Don't make noises, they'll think it's me. So this is something I'll have to figure out or consider, like based on how this is currently going, the E and the F are colliding quite a bit. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. There's some tension there. Yeah, so I can try to lift him up a little. Right. Or he could be maybe be a little smaller instead, or do you think that would throw it off? Uh, it, it could probably be a touch smaller. Um, but there's not a lot of, like sometimes I have uh, variations in the size of the letter forms. Mm -hmm. And so if you kind of can get away with making certain things like on this version, if I do this one, like certain letters, they change in scale and, and, and that kind of thing. This one, not as much, so I wouldn't want it to go up too small. Yeah. No, they all seem but pretty equal because it might stand out if I it's think I can just, too different. I can just bump him up a little bit and he'll just collide with these two. But hey, and I can do some trickery in Illustrator to make it just out. Illustrator trickery is the best kind of trickery. Sorry if I'm blocking. No, paper, you're doing great. Paper. I also have sweaty hands, Brian. So <laughs> nobody knows that on the internet. Here. Nobody knows on the internet you're a dog. You don't have to admit <laughs> to these things. I feel like I'm pressing really hard too. <laughs> like damage the paper. I think I oh, punched through it at one no. point. <laughs> He's out of control, guys. I need help. <laughs> you're doing great. It looks beautiful. It really does. I cannot wait to see it in Illustrator. Tell me about your game plan on Illustrator, if you have one. Um, you know, like, do you have colors already in mind, or do you have, like, a pattern that you might want to use, or? No, I try not to jump ahead with that stuff, um, kind of focus on the forms. This comes from, like, designing type, you design in black and white, basically. So if you can nail the form, you can kind of do anything that you want after that. But mm -hmm. if, if not, sometimes those tricks are just hiding what maybe, uh, or form or something. Yeah. Uh, Is that my problem? Because <laughs> I feel like I go straight to the end. I always do. I want to well, know what fun. it looks like. It's fun. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, if you know you're going to, you can know you're going to use like, oh, this is going to be a two color screen print or something like that. So how does that play into it? But right. at this, at this point, I don't have a plan. So. And well, it's, that's good. And I, I do, I tend to improvise a lot in, in Illustrator. Like um, if I just quickly look at this one. Yeah. Show us this here. All of the oh. all of the black line work was improvised. Really? In Illustrator, like I had the I had the solid form, and then I just was like, "Well, what happens if I make this cut in this way and add a little bit of extra shadow here?" And just kind of played it out that way. That's super and it, cool. Yeah, and did and I do kind of global passes on stuff. So yeah, just quickly do a version and then you know print it out or look at it and and see. Sorry, Paul, I just damaged your paper. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We've got about four minutes left, by the way, guys. Submit Get those, those entries. Submissions in. Submit them. 
Well, I love that that was the last minute sort of thing that you did on that piece because it, that to me that stands out. That's why that piece is interesting is because of this like fun and it doesn't look improvised to me because of the like the weights. You've got like careful weighting of like the thick and the thin lines. It it feels very thought out. So that's I love it when things are like that. When it's like, "Oh, you spent hours on this." And you're like, "No." I just like one. Well, no, it was it. it was hours. Oh, okay. It's ex extremely time consuming, but I was I had no, maybe it's because I had no plan, and so I was like, mm. what if I do this or what if I do that? Um, There's just something free about it. It's yeah. really cool. And it was for myself, so I could do whatever I wanted with it. Yeah, that is nice. Which is always nice. Do you find yourself working for clients more than you do work for yourself? Uh, <laughs> I wish. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, not so much. No, I, I do. Um, the the work I get a lot or have gotten recently has been like custom type work, so mm. um, it's different than this. Yeah. Like, uh, but I, I do I do have some lettering commissions that come in, um, and requests for things, but sometimes the requests are just don't fit with, right. with my current schedule. Of or, course. So you're mostly defining, like designing full typefaces, is what you're telling me, if I understand. Yeah, like full. Yeah, like, I all try of to. I, I mean, this stuff helps me to create those typefaces. It kind of, I kind of push myself to do this stuff so that it hopefully informs the new typefaces that I'm making. Right. Um, or gives me ideas for a new design or. Yeah, you can kind of feed that inspiration. Yeah, or even if like oh, I really like the way this M looks, you know, like what would it look like to have a more standardized typeface that had these characteristics. Right. So sometimes you go you go all the way this way and then you just backtrack a little bit to see what works. Yeah. It's almost like this is your exercise, you know, yeah. to like figure that stuff out. Do you have a favorite letter? Does the chat have a favorite letter? If you guys have a favorite letter, put it in there. But I'm thinking about you designing a whole typeface and I'm thinking, you know, like which letter is like, oh my god, now I have to design the B or whatever. Like, which one's a bummer and which one are you like, yes, it's Q time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm always a fan of the lowercase a. The, lowercase a. The double story A's, like a lot of, Heck a yes. lot of. Uh, Heck yes, double. I changed my A's. You know, I learned to, to write an A without the little dealy bopper. Technical term. A uh, school book A. You just school you just book A. I, now, now I know the real term. Yeah, and and I changed it to the. You actually write yeah, these. Yeah, I write those. Well, I have never. I write in all caps when I write. Oh. So. But, yeah, the the lowercase A is good. The lowercase G, the double story G is fun. Double story G. Oh, see, I don't yeah. write those. Now I'm gonna like feel challenged to do that. I the I actually like the lowercase K, when it's more of like a script K. Mm -hmm. Um. Why is this? It's like tearing through. Can anybody see this? <laughs> yes, they can see it. Don't worry. People can see it. It's good. We got a lot of letters. Okay. People like Z, which is fun. Q is fun. E, lowercase e, lowercase cursive R. G is always a problem, says Morella. G is always a problem? How do you feel about it? capital G? Oh, a capital G. Well, that was what she specifically said. Capital so. G is always a problem. Um, it just depends on what kind of G you're drawing, I suppose. I guess so. I guess it does depend upon it. All right, friends, it has become the time. It is time to look at your work that you have submitted. I'm super excited to do this. I'm gonna make my screen full size. Where's that button? There we go. And then we're gonna look at some of your challenge submissions. So yay! This one is from Mason Dixon. And it is a beautiful Adobe Live. I really like those little three mm. E's and B, and it makes me think of Tron. Excuse me, yeah. Yeah, it's super fun. We got this one from Tulsi. Whoa! Oh, wow. <laughs> I like it because it reminds me of like candy. It looks like candy to me. I like it because I, I don't even, I wouldn't necessarily think it said Adobe Live. It's yeah. just kind of these abstract shapes, so that's, but I, that's I, cool. I get the sense of it. Thank you, Tulsi. This is super cool. If you scroll up to the next placeholder, that's Oh, no. Is this not the next placeholder? Oh, shoot. Friends, I am so sorry. <laughs> we were reviewing the wrong ones. I see 
it. I'm sorry. We went over two, so let's, yes. Nikita, uh, the Nikita. jokester, <laughs> the jokester has put this gorgeous rendition of Adobe Live in here. I love this, Nikita. This is so fun. Looks like you uh, took some cues from that. We, we took a, a Ken Barber's Spencerian script workshop together. Oh, you know this jokester. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Another, a fellow ambigrammer. ambigrammer. <sighs> That's awesome. Alexandria Edwards has this really super sweet Adobe Live. I like that shadow. I like what you've done. It's simple, but it's super effective. Let's keep going, because I want to try to get through some submissions. Um, we've got this gorgeous one from Daniel. Adobe Live. I like how Live has a little flourish. The B has a little heart in it. Yeah, it's super cool. I love it. Ricardo Fiera has this really fun toothpaste-y one. That's what I would call it, you know? Like, it's fun. Like, I bet I want to stick my finger in that. I'm pretty sure it's icing, and I'll just eat it. Eat up. Yeah. Super great. Keep going. Eduardo has this beautiful, scratchy, fun Adobe Live. It's got a lot of motion. It's got, yeah, it's got some nice texture and movement to it. Yeah, I love it. And we've got this beautiful one from Christian. It's sort of like... Feels Eastern, you know? Or like brushwork. Definitely has some brush qualities to it. Yeah. That A is looking a little bit like a T, but I think just maybe lowering that crossbar would would help that a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. But it's kind of fun because of that, you know? But you're right, it is a little confusing at first glance. Really great. We've got this one from Francisco, which is like super graphic. I really like the overlapping colors. Reminds me of like CMKY printing style. <laughs> yeah, he's using the, what's the, um, that pen. I can't think of the name of it. The folded pen. Oh yeah, folded pen? That's fun. Is that what you use, Francisco? These are super fun. Tell us, Francisco, if you're still Tell hanging us. around. Hanging I hope around. you are. No, this is my first time, so I'm going to need to ask the, the um, powers that be if, if I need to keep going, or how long do we do the challenge submissions, my friends? Or maybe even Voodoo Val will know, like, how long we go. Is there more? Hey, there's, a, there's a lot more. Oh. There's a lot more. We could keep going through all of them. Are we supposed to go through all? Review all of them. Review all of them. Awesome. That's so great. I'm so glad we can do that. So we've cool. got this one from Judith Meyer, and it's got a beautiful circle yeah, as well. Yeah, it's working that circle. Uh, I like that they used uh, two different styles for the different words. But they, f they still feel like they oh, yeah. live in the same life. Yeah, you know? because like, of that lockup, it, it really helps them yeah. tie together. Because if I saw them flat, I would be like, oh no, <laughs> like two fonts, what are you doing? Because <laughs> again, remember, I'm terrible. I'm a terrible <laughs> judgmental font user. Adobe Live. I love the texture in this, Josephine. I really do, because it looks painted, and that's totally my jam. So I like it. That, yeah, that L's doing that nice little interaction with the D. Mm-hmm. They're hanging out, being pals. Just giving it a hug. Yeah, a little hug. This is from Anel, and it's got a really fun, again, I'm feeling this Tron vibe. I'm yeah, that's cool. I like how they broke it down into just those simple horizontal lines. Mm -hmm. And maybe it would have gotten confusing if they had had the top on the E. Uh, the or third, the B. The third one on the E because it would have looked too much like the B. Yeah, you're but right. It'd be interesting to see. Yeah. I feel like live could be done the same way or maybe centered. It feels a little bit like it's... It's running away a little, a little bit. Running off or it's... Yeah. But that's but cool. It's really great. We've got this one from Heidi Morrow, which Ooh, is super so bubbly. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's super cute. I really like that. Yeah, I like the playing off the, the circles and all those counters and just kind of making it spread out. I can see that easily animating. Yeah. Yeah, I can it's almost already moving in my mind, you know, because it's just so fun and yeah, I can see it. They look like little characters to me. Afroja has this one, which is super like just like black and white, and I love that, because we were just talking about, like, just stick to the black and white. Like, don't go the, to color yet. He has a little bow tie, or a little... He's got, like, an accent. Oh, yeah, no, he does, the top one. Like, like Mrs. Pac-Man. Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> nice work, thank you for that. Oh, Monica. Wow, lots of dots going on wow, in Monica. Yes. Really lovely. Dotty with this one in the color palettes. Pretty crazy. Yeah. But I, I like it, because I think you did a good job of working all those colors it in It does. There. They interact really nicely. It keeps your eye moving through. Yes, it does. There's lots of movement since there's the repetition. Abdul Karim has this one for us. Abdul, I know you wanted some of them 
I, or was it you? Maybe someone in the chat wanted theirs removed. I'm not sure. Hopefully this is not one of those. <laughs> I know. Well, they just said remove my first submissions because they wanted to show us, I think, oh. a different one. Um, anyway, I hope this is this is chill because it's really great. I love this styling. I love this like ultra modern look. Yeah, and I like the the, the color balance. Just having that one stroke on the live, yeah, with the yellow just brings a nice tie in between the two. It's a good like graphic treatment. It just feels like you could build a whole brand around this. Yeah, I can see this being these being like blocks too. Like I can see this dimensionally. Yeah, like having those cut out and yeah. huge. Absolutely. Graham Brown has serifs. What do you think about those serifs? I think Graham did a good job using serifs. I really do, and I'm not lying. Thank you, Graham, for submitting serifs. <laughs> and I also like the green on the inside there. because A little see, highlight, yeah. I see you, green. You're trying to hide that green from me, but I see it. And <laughs> I really appreciate that you used all the colors. Nice job. And then uh, Simon, I think, with the accent probably, has this awesome like overlap in Adobe Live. Wow. That's how you integrated the colors was by like using the different shapes. I really like live, like the cursive of it. It's very pretty. It's, yeah, it's, it seems a little bit big. I feel like Adobe could be a little bit either bolder or wider. Mm. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Just, just to help the read, they could still do like the interaction between where they cross over is cool. It's yeah. kind of like an, not really like an overprint, but it, it has that quality to it. It does. It's really cool, and I like your logo too, Simone. It's really great. Tyrone Henry has this fun little, little Adobe Live for us. I like your cursive that you decided to use. This sort of scripty prettiness. Yeah, it's really fun. Victor has this awesome hand lettering. Wow, is that Adobe Sketch? Is that? Looks like it, is, paint it uses some kind of acrylic. It's the acrylic marker. brush, acrylic I brush, think. Yeah. yeah, I think that's Adobe Sketch, and I think that's the acrylic brush, which is super cool to see. <laughs> Looks really fun. Ooh, Mikhail has this like inside out look going to it. This looks like a 90s ray flyer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I mean that in the best way. I love it. It's really cool, Mikhail. Oh, and is that it? Wow, what? I'm gonna refresh and see if that's it. That felt like nothing. I felt like we got through it so fast. No, we got one more. And it's Alexandria Edwards. Which no, is really this one. cute. Oh, did we? Shoot. Yeah. Am I like the worst submission goer through her ever or what? I start <laughs> out on the wrong ones and then we look at the ones we've already looked before. I'm sorry, guys. I promise tomorrow I'll be more on it. <laughs> Super great. It was updated, so this Voodoo Val. Ha. It was what? And Paco as uh, well has. Oh, I think they added the stars or the little diamonds shapes. I don't think those were in it the first time. I like it. It looks super great. And thank you so much for everybody who submitted. It was super beautiful. And we love seeing your work and love seeing just like what you can be inspired to do just by hanging out with us. So thank you. It's so fun. What's going on in the chat there? They're just chatting about Sketch, and uh -huh. they're all talking about what, what we were um, observing. We've got some awesome comments about like people liking the different stuff and how they updated it. And we've got a question from Ciro, if the challenge will continue until tomorrow. And it's true. Um, we choose the winner on the last day. I'm sorry, again, total newbie. So. Uh, we'll select one the next day. No other new challenge tomorrow. We have one winner today, and we'll have a new challenge tomorrow. That's right. It's a new challenge. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So if you want to do Adobe Live, you do that today. Yes. But so you have all day. You have all day, but we'll have a brand new challenge. And now I've remembered that I've been updated on what the challenges were. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just was not in my head. But we'll talk to you about the new challenge tomorrow, OK? So stay tuned for that. You can always rewatch this segment anytime you want, Abdul. It will be on, it's on YouTube. And then it's also, I think, on this tab. I think you can find it here on this tab as well. So. You can definitely see it on YouTube. They've got these awesome playlists. So each sort of playlist is lined up um, by uh, by what the week theme was. Like this theme is hand lettering. Yes. Cool. So I've gotten the in there, uh, and I'm gonna try to figure out how the Z how the Z works. So we're going into the Z. Going into the Z, and I have. I have this space here to work with. So I feel like it'll work. I feel like that's the shape it wants to take. 
It's just making sure that it fills in the space nicely and doesn't look like an L. Right. So. What What are the most common problem letters like that? It's It depends on how you write them. Because yeah, like a Z depends. in cursive would not look like an L at all. No, you could have a cursive Q and maybe people would think it was a two or. Yeah. Um, yeah, it just depends. Little tricky bits like that. Thanks for joining us, Juan. I'll see you tomorrow. So long, Juan. How do you know that? Oh, they're saying see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know he left? I'm just that good. I'm directly plugged into Behance. I've got like an implant behind my ear. And uh, yeah, those are all lies. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. It was so nice to see you in the chat. And I need that video of your cat, okay? I'm not joking. I need that. Share your cat video, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, type is so fun. I've, you know, I thought I wanted to design my own font, and then I started thinking about it, and I realized how much work it was, and I stopped. Um, do you have any advice for, for people like me? <laughs> Oh, I mean, if you're not into it, then it's it's not worth. <laughs> don't do it. I mean, you don't have to do it. There's it's plenty not... of people like me making them for you. So. <laughs> uh -oh. It's not that I'm not into it. It's just, I guess, you know, much like animation. How animation is so much work. Yeah. It feels like a lot because you start and you're like, oh, it's just 26 letters, and it's like, no, it's not. It's actually, you know, what 52, I guess, capital and lower, and then all the extra bits that you, you may want to not add or add in and. So like how, what is it for you? You just have a passion, you don't even care. You don't even think about it. You just go through the whole No, but list. you don't have to design the whole thing. I mean, mm. I, I tend to design enough to use it and mm -hmm. maybe share it or show other people and see if they've got feedback or like, hey, you should continue with that or no, that's not a good idea. It's been done before kind of thing. That makes uh, sense. So yeah, you, you, know, you can think of it as a smaller task, like, oh, I'm gonna make a logo type. And so that's only like maybe six letters. And if you like the way those letters look, like maybe I'll draw the rest of them just to see what it would look like if it was a font. Yeah. Um, I know there's a, is it a plugin that's the font self? Or? I do not know. Uh, I think there's a plugin you can use if you want to design a font. Try to just design it in Illustrator. If anybody has any more information on that, you can share it. <laughs> and then Ari put your fonts into the chat. So if you want to check out the fonts made by Mark, possibly purchase them, or I'm not sure. I Like, they are there at that Just link. go sync them. Sync yeah. them to your computer. Oh, yeah, if you're a Creative Cloud kit. user, just, just go and uh, check them out, see if they work for any of your projects. Yeah, don't be like Past Renee. Don't be hanging on to your cereal. <laughs> Typekit is pretty incredible. It's Now that I've learned how to use it, like, I can't believe it. And even Creative Cloud Files is super sweet. I basically keep everything there, and then I don't have to bring my computer with me. I can just, you know. Wherever I be, all my files are. Wherever you be. Mm-hmm. Super great. Shiara wants to know if we'll see this animated on day three, which is like super like ambitious. I wish. She's gonna do that part. Yeah, oh my gosh. Okay, I just signed up to animate this. <laughs> Lord only knows. I mean, I could make it move. <laughs> I could make it move. I could make it move. Yeah, like, <laughs> here you go, it's animated. I mean, I could do a little bit can more, but. zoom in, uh, zoom out. <laughs> I don't think uh, we're gonna get it animated. No. Maybe somebody wants to animate it after I vectorized it. Yeah. Shout out. And yeah. Tell me that you can do that. You can do a collab with Mark here. Yanina wants to know who won the challenge, but nobody's won the challenge, right? Because that's good. it's gonna be for the next session because we're not finished yet. So you can still submit, even though Mark and I will not be here past 1:30. Uh, but we'll have an excellent next hand letter whose name escapes me because I don't have it in my brain. So um. Cindy? Cindy is going to be here, and you can submit your challenge to Cindy so that she can take a look at it. And then after 3 p.m., they'll select the winner, and you get a prize. If you win. If you win, yes. So that's not bad. No, it's, it's better than bad. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> now I feel like my C's a bit flat. So I'm gonna fix that too. Yeah, because yeah. we want more C. Oh, I might have. I might do this on another piece just because I pressed so hard that I can't erase that line. I actually kind of like my previous one. So. Shiara wants to learn how to do animation. She says you can learn. 
the stuff is out there on the internet, girl. Just like go out there and I'm sorry, I gendered you. If you girl, I apologize. Stuff is out there <laughs> on the internet. Go get it. Honestly, it's there. Like when I left animation school, that was the biggest takeaway for me was that everything I learned was literally on the internet already. <laughs> but I, it's true. But I didn't know what to search for. So you know, if you don't know what you don't know, you can't figure it out. Uh, so that's the trick, and that's why school is a beautiful thing. Yeah, but if you if you ask, if you find someone that you like their animation, you just say, hey, do you, do you know of any tutorials, or do you have any tutorials yourself, or? And animation is one of those things, um, like most arts, that you have to have a gut feeling for. You know, you started spacing out these different letters just because you kind of had a feeling, like I feel like this is too much, or I feel like that's too. Yeah, it's, it's just observation, too. Yeah. I mean, like. And that only comes from experience. Yes. So if you want to get out there and animate, you got to start animating you start now. Somewhere. Yeah. And Make then, a little ball bounce and then go yes. from there. Yes. Flower sack. It's like I a sack of flower. What that means. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of the animation like basics, just like the ball bounce. The ball bounce oh, okay. is that's like the very first one they have you do. So if you can imagine, you've got a ping pong ball and you've got a bowling ball. And both of them, if you rolled them off a table and bounced them, would react differently. Right. The ping pong ball would go up and the bowling ball would go down. Correct. And so that's how you like show weight for animation. And the flower sack is another way to show weight. So it's like a sack of flour, like literally like you'd see in a cartoon, you know? And if the sack of flour was thrown over your shoulder, it might have two sort of lumps of where its weight are. But if it was sitting on the ground, all the flour might settle. Yeah. So it's again an, an exercise in volume and figuring out where it goes. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, an exercise no. in different tiny volume. It is. It's totally the same thing that you're doing. Super fun. I was, I'm wondering if I don't curve it around, if it will look more like a Z. I See, think you're is, right. I think that's what makes it look like an L. Maybe. It looks great. Super fun. Seven Up says he confuses or they confuse the schedules because they're in South America. I can only imagine like what it's like, but we're so glad to have you joining from all the way in South America. Alcott says they're learning so much just from watching us, which is oh, super nice. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear it too. <laughs> I'm also learning about type, which is really exciting. Maybe someday I'll make my own font. Maybe someday. I think, uh, yeah, if, if you were a designer or I think any use type or a user of type, then you should try. Yeah. At I least should. give it a go. And, I uh, should. One, you just get a better sense of, of what goes into it, and maybe a, bit, a better appreciation for it, or a better understanding of, of the forms themselves, which is only going to help you in your design. It's of true. Other things. It's true. Even if, you know, like I'm traditionally an illustrator, so I just draw stuff, right? Like people just and dogs. Stuff. I'm and, just drawing stuff. Yeah, just stuff, right? But if using the same principles and using the same sort of like designer mind, you'd be making a font, you know? So it's it's like exercising a different art muscle, but but still doing an art. Just destroy it. No, you didn't destroy it. It's okay. You're doing great. Take a minute. Yeah. I had that version, mm -hmm. which I, I kind of like the mm -hmm. this kind of curve that's going on here. It kind of flattened it's out nice here. It's nice and mirrored. Oh yeah, I see it. Um, so I want to bring that back, but I can't erase that because I drew too hard. So I'm just gonna. Oh. I'm gonna do another version of it. Here. Just one more version. No, not the whole thing. Just the C, because I can I can piece them together. Oh or, yeah, cool. You can composite that together. Yeah, if I designed a, a font, I'd be definitely reaching outside of my art comfort zone. What about you guys in the chat? What's your art comfort zone? So what's your comfort zone, and then what would be reaching outside of it if you tried to do something? How about for you, Mark? It's growing. So I was saying about this is I'm hopefully growing my comfort zone mm -hmm. because 
if I do these things for myself or as explorations, when somebody asks for something like that, then I already be like, I can do that. I've done that before. You know, like somebody's like, hey, can you make a table out of a letter form? I'd be like, yes, I know how to do that. I know how to get that done because I did it for myself. So that's, that's another thing you could look at. It's just a way to kind of grow what you're comfortable doing. Yeah, absolutely. Shauna says her comfort zone is lettering, but her hard thing is characters. Now you mean characters like a like a cute little character, like Mickey Mouse or something, right? You don't mean like a letter character. She probably needs letter character. Oh, or does she? We'll find out. Yeah, um, but they are totally they're di very different animals. When I'm when I'm working on yeah. this, I'm only I'm concerned about how these letters work in conjunction and in this whole piece. If I'm working on a typeface, I have to think about not only how it works mm -hmm. next to one letter, but how it works and looks with the rest of everything to okay. create the consistency that makes it look like it's the same typeface. Yeah, that makes sense. That's tricky. Tim says outside of his comfort zone is doing anything in public or in live video, which Mark oh. also said. This is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He's doing great. So you are in your comfort zone. You just didn't know it. We've got Pinguino who says that her comfort zone is illustration and out of her comfort zone is typography and motion graphics. Nice to see you, Pinguino. It's been a long time. She's in If you're comfortable with illustration, I think you probably would do okay with some, with drawing letters. You just think about it in that in that same way that all I'm drawing I'm drawing these letter forms. I'm not I'm not writing them. You yeah. know? So I'm constructing them. Yeah, you could think about it more as like a character, I think, Pinguino. And maybe it wouldn't be quite so spooky, you know, if you were thinking about it more as an illustration or more of just, just a shape. It's a shape that people already recognize as a thing. So. Yeah, so you've kind of got that like to your advantage because sometimes if you're drawing like a dragon and it doesn't look like what people expect a dragon to look like, they'll be like, oh, I don't know about your dragon. But at least these are letters. And so most people will kind of recognize that. And it's okay if they confuse them for something else. That's where it comes cool with like your anagrams and pushing letter forms and that sort of fun graffiti style. It's almost like a secret code even though it's right in your face. So you can see that it looks a little better. A little bit. Uh, Gennaro says that the comfort zone for them is letters and outside their comfort zone is not doing letters. Not doing letters. <laughs> It's pretty simple. Tim says he realized that you were following him on Instagram, but he wasn't following you back, so he just did. And actually, we had a question about Next. what your Instagram was or what your social was, and I didn't oh, catch that. Oh, I'm a confusing that mess. I have, I have all kinds of different stuff. Oh. I have my website, Paperwork Studio. I have my Type Foundry, which is PS Type, and then so on Twitter, I'm PS Type Lab. On Instagram, I'm just Mark Canesso. Okay, good to and know. That's it. Good to know. So follow Mark for And then more. I also have, like, as a department of paperwork studio, I have Pencil Pushers Lettering Department, which is still just me, but I like to make new things, so. I love that. <laughs> I think that's really cool. I have a whole other type foundry site, too, called Decoy, which just has the exact same stuff that PS Type has, but it's on another site. And it's a decoy. It's called Decoy. <laughs> Are you trying to get away with something there? Are you like trying to escape the law or something? What's it a decoy for? <laughs> it's just another another avenue for people to find my stuff. <laughs> you know what? That's smart. You're just or confusing. Well, nah, it's it's good. It's good. Spread it spread it wide. <laughs> yeah. Pinguino says that typography, spacing, and balance affects the overall piece, which I agree with, and that. She finds measuring everything out is kind of overwhelming. Do you ever feel overwhelmed like that? Measuring everything out? What yeah, just kind of like? balancing all the pieces that have to come into a piece of typography. Because there's many, you know? There's the, the letter forms that you choose, there's the spacing, there's the size, there's the texture of the actual forms, you know? Like, I can see where she's, what she's talking about because it, it feels overwhelming to me too. <laughs> yeah, I guess it just, uh don't think about them in, in all those terms or in like it's their letters so yeah you just go for it sounds like you're a born letterer it's just amazing 
Yeah, do I want your love? But I did. I started uh, the first like typefaces I ever made were they weren't even workable. They were just constructed in Illustrator. Yeah. So very geometric. You know, mm -hmm. just kind of trying to understand how to how to make a form look like a letter. Mm -hmm. um, so That's I did. Great. Yeah. Well, most of my most of my drawing is done in the computer. I think we have about five minutes left. I just want to warn everybody that you've only got five minutes for us here with Mark today, but we will be back tomorrow at the exact same, same time. time. Mm -hmm. Same URL. It'll be us. Or maybe it's a decoy. Or No, it's not a decoy, I swear. <laughs> We're going to be here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> everybody else just realized what time it was. Yeah. Like We're all the almost done here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we have to actually stop. Yeah. That's literally it, guys. We actually have to stop, stop. It was awesome right. hanging out with you today. Thank you so much, Mark. It's Thanks. beautiful. I can't wait to see you pick it up tomorrow. I'll try to keep working on it so we have more to talk about tomorrow. Thank you, guys. We'll see you then. Date. <laughs>